I'm here to kind of give you a basic introduction to 3D printing and what we're going to be using the 3D printer for, um, how to use it, the basic functions of it, and how we're really going to get started with 3D printing. Um, first, I have to say, your class is really, really lucky. Um, when I was in elementary school, I don't think I had a teacher that was willing to spend money like this in order to get us a 3D printer. Um, it wasn't until high school that we were able to actually get our own 3D printer for the entire school and start working with engineering projects. So um, first off, I think you guys should thank Mr. Marr for getting this 3D printer for you and um, giving us time and, and letting us invest into learning science but actually putting it to real life uses. So the printer that we have is called the Monolith 3D printer. Perfect. Um, so when you're actually making something, 3D printing or anything when they're making toys in factories, when they make um, tools inside shops, they start out with a 3D design on a computer. And that design is using a program called CAD. It stands for um, Computer Assisted Drafting. And we're going to be using a CAD program in here in the classroom in order to design different things to actually print out here. We design it in CAD, and that's an image right here. It's a computer design. We save it as an STL file, which basically just makes your 3D hollow. It makes your 3D shape hollow. Then we put it in a slicing software. Now this slicing software, it creates the path that the 3D printer will actually take. How many of you have ever used a glue gun at home? Quite a few hands. So a 3D printer is not too much different from a hot glue gun, but instead of printing hot glue, it actually uses filament or a plastic. So what happens is there's a little tip or a nozzle that is going to get really, really hot it gets to 190 degrees Celsius. Now that doesn't sound very hot because we think, oh, 190 degrees, that's, our ovens get hotter at that at home. But because it's Celsius and not Fahrenheit, if we were to translate that to Fahrenheit, it's about 400 degrees. So the tip of this nozzle is very hot and we have to be safe around this when we're using this. Um, what it does, <clears throat> it runs on this platform and it sets a layer of really thin plastic down. The piece of plastic that it lays down is the size of a piece of paper. That's how thin it is. When it does that first layer, it moves up, and it does another layer, the same thickness as a piece of paper. And it goes layer by layer until it prints out your design. Um, after, after we put it through the slicing software, then we actually go and print out real objects. Go ahead. So I want to introduce you to your printer. There's lots of different types of printers out there. Um, this is a monolith mini printer um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the basic pieces and the basic parts of, of the printer. Uh, the first one is the extruder and the motor detention spring and tab which is this part right here on the top. So this part right here is a motor that will actually feeds the filament through the tube and outside of that nozzle we were talking about earlier. So. It's also responsible for holding the filament in there tight. There's a little clip here that holds it, and there's a little spindle here that runs the power. The next part we have is the extruder assembly. And the extruder assembly is this piece right here. This is, the extruder assembly has the heating block in it, the actual part that heats up the filament. It has the, an extruder fan a little fan in front. This is in charge of cooling down the filament so that it doesn't stay hot. It cools it immediately. Um, and we have that nozzle we were talking about. Just that little tiny piece of metal that's at 400 degrees that is extracting all that filament. Um, and then, after that, we have the x-axis rods, y-axis rods, and actual z-axis rods. So, how many of you have been working with math and you've been doing plot, plotting on an x-y axis or an x-y grid? A few of you. I know, I know some of you have started doing that because we started doing it over in the Learning Center a couple times. So that is the XY grid. It looks like this. Here's your X. Here's your Y. And you plot points on it. You can plot lines on it. How many of you are familiar with doing this? Now that we're kind of seeing it. Okay, great. So when we use our program, we're actually going to be drawing on an XY grid. 
the computer doesn't just see a design and it's able to say, oh, that's a cool design and prints it out. It actually needs all of the coordinate plots that make up the actual project. Now, there's one more thing we're going to be introducing you to. XY is great, but this is two dimensional. This is like on a piece of paper. Right now we're looking down at it. We're going to be introducing the Z axis. And the Z axis, if I can, if I'm good at drawing in 3D, it kind of looks like this. So if this is your X axis and this is your Y axis, here's your Z axis. And your Z axis is in charge of how high an object is. So it's kind of hard to grasp, but once we start working in the computers and once we start working on CAD, you'll see that Z axis and you'll be able to manipulate it and look around. Um, and it, it'll be a lot easier to see. Um, and then w uh, this printer we're actually going to be setting up in the corner of the classroom because when you get a lot of airflow, that can actually mess with the temperature of this and it can, it can manipulate your prints a little bit. So if we have it close to the door, and especially now that it's winter, every time we open that door, cold air rushes in. We want the printer to be away from that cold air that's coming in. We want the temperature to stay consistent the entire time it's printing. 